to Tim with Barnaby, we were here to see the GH5, which I think is going to be an absolute fantastic camera um, compared to the GH4. What, what, what's your thoughts yourself? Yeah, we're very excited, obviously, about the GH5. It's been three years or longer in development. Um, and uh, some of the improvements that we've been able to make, both from a photo perspective and from a video perspective, have been really, really groundbreaking. Now, well, what are some of these features? Um, you know, th things like uh, the, the one thing I discovered today was dual slot. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah, dual slot, of course, is a, it's probably not a new trend in the industry, but something that was heavily requested of us uh, quite soon after we launched the GH4, actually. And it gives you a number of benefits, such as relay recording, etc., by having those two card slots. It really gives both the photo market and the video market and the hybrid market the opportunity or versatility to capture photos, stills, etc. in one shoot. The, the other thing, obviously, is 4K 50p. That, that's virtually unknown in, 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 a, in a domestic camera. Yep, so by launching the GH5, it's the, uh, the first mirrorless camera to introduce 4K 50p. Also, in addition to that, 422 10-bit, which has obviously got a lot of the video market very excited indeed. Is there any other features you want to tell me about the camera itself that, that might be of in, interest to, the, to the, the, the viewers? Yep, so we've introduced a new 20 megapixel sensor. Um, so the previous GH4 had a 16 mega sensor. And in addition, it's the first time we've incorporated a 20 mega sensor and removed the low pass filter. So those two things combined will hopefully give us very, very good image quality. In addition, we've got Bluetooth built into the GH5 for the first time, which will allow you to have an always on connection to a smartphone. And actually, if you have a number of GH5s in a rig together, you can copy the settings from one GH5 to the other via the Bluetooth itself. We have a five axis image stabilization built into the camera. Again, something the GH4 didn't have, so really, really excited about that as well. And also one of the big requests that's been coming to us from the video maker is variable frame rates. And on the GH5, we can now have up to 180 frames per second in variable frame rate in full HD, which is again, something that's very exciting for us. Now, the one thing uh, people have been asking me about is the, the um, XLR adapter. Now, what, what kind of price is that going to come in at? Do we, do we know yet? Yeah, so the XLR adapter, of course, it's up to the retailer to set their own price, but we expect to see maybe around £350 or something like that. Which I think is a fantastic price. Now, for £350, you're getting full professional connections, aren't you? Yeah, yeah so you've got two XLR jacks, phantom power, uh, and full um, independent mic control over the, uh, the mic. Uh, just as a, an extra question, when are we going to see the GH5? So the GH5 will start shipping on around about the 20th of March from our warehouse and the street price on the body only, again up to the retailers, but body only, including VAT, we expect maybe 1699 Tell me James, for people who don't know who you are, what's your background and what sort of jobs you kind of do? Okay, so, um, yeah, I'm a shooter. I have a small production company. Uh, we do anything between uh, corporates, music videos, um, that type of thing. I also do a LUT business, the LUTs, where I develop camera profiles and, and looks for different types of cameras, uh, trying to match them all or just trying to give individual looks. Now you've had a look at the GH5, do you think it's the camera it was going to be? I'm, I'm, very, I'm very impressed with some of the specs. I think it's nearly there. There's obviously more work to be done, but there always can be. So. Uh, we've just done a, a long list of potential things we'd like to see in the next model because they would never never make it to this model. But there are a few things that are going to be implemented in firmware, hopefully. Um, but all in all, it's, it would be definitely a camera I would put back in my bag as a, as a B camera. Uh, I mainly shoot on the red I have done for the last couple of years. And I always used to use the GH4 because I used to like the colour and the way the ISO, everything about it was more in tune to the red. So I would definitely put the GH5 back in my bag. So excited to get it. Can't wait to do some colour profiling for it. And one of the wish lists is a usable, customizable LUT. Uh, at the moment, they just have the, the standard correction one from the Vlog. So I hope that they implement a custom LUT. That would be very handy for many users to match cameras between different manufacturers. And obviously, it will help my little LUT business. Um, so I think all in all, it's you know it's got good prospects really. I mean, it's the chi you're always limited to the chip size, uh, but by the look of it, they've done some really interesting things. So the 6K photo and video mode um, is is amazing. So that's good. that's fantastic. As a photographer, would that be something you would do you implement yourself? Well, I mean, everything I do on the red at the moment, I, I have the Dragon, so I shoot at 6K. 
and I'm always pulling stills for the advertising campaigns uh, for use in their little campaigns. They're like 80, 90 megapixels, depending on what aspect I'm running. But uh, that's something I do all the time. So having a four, you know, four K, I, I, I will still do that with the six K is obviously it's going to be beneficial. I mean, they're obviously it's a small camera. You're limited to frame rates, and but you know, it, as an overall package, it's you know it's fantastic. So I would definitely use the feature of pulling stills as I has always done on a 6K chip. So yes, absolutely, I will be using it as a still and video camera. The viewfinder is arguably going to be the best viewfinder maybe ever seen on a mirrorless camera, or any camera. 3.68 million dots, 0.76 magnification. The, the GH5 is almost here. It is, that's right. Yes, um, by the time you'll be watching this, uh, it'll be announced at CES and the timetable will be revealed and you'll know you'll be able to get one in your hands in March. Our holders are going to be big enough to actually hold all these GH5s. We have specifically moved to a much larger premises so we can stock uh, as many GH5s as we think we might need. Now, spec-wise, what do you think of the camera? Well, I think it's a, it's a, a, a leap above the, the GH4 specification. Um, the addition of, of 10-bit 42 is, I, I think, one of the most exciting things about it. But in-body stabilisation, 6K anamorphic mode, it just goes on and on. It's, it's the camera that keeps on giving. And, and more about the XLR unit, what do you think of that? Um, the XLR unit, I think, is, is exceptionally good. It's lightweight and compact and doesn't need external power like the Yagi did with the, the previous generation GH, GH4. And it's a very high quality preamp. It doesn't come out to a three and a half mini jack so it will keep it balanced throughout the chain to get it straight into the motherboard of the camera so we don't come out to a sort of analog stage on the way. And this will improve the audio quality significantly. And five, five axis stabilization, I mean, that, that, that just looks exceptional. That's right. So, so in conjunction with lens stabilization, you can get an amazing, uh, almost gimbal like performance. It's going to be really interesting to try it out and see, see what situations where this can be used in. So, when do you think holders are going to get their hands on one then? I, I believe they'll be shipping at the end of March, so so that's when uh, we sh we should have a pre-production sample before then, but just the one. Um, but but shipping in any numbers, I believe the end of March. We should at, at the BVE show there should be quite a few of the models. We're hoping Panasonic will lend us a few, so you can come and get hands-on at BVE at the end of February.